All of us face times when we wonder what to do. Uh, should I date this gal or uh, guy? Uh, should I take this job? Should I stay at the job I'm at or should I move on to something else? Uh, should I go to this college? Should I go to graduate school at that place? Um, you know, just all kinds of things we face. And we say, I wonder what God wants me uh, to do. I'd like you to just to turn to people in your group right now. Would you share a time when you faced a blind intersection where you didn't know which way to turn and you didn't know, didn't feel like God was giving you much? Uh, share about one of those times. Okay, this is called the 15th in our series of messages after God's heart. Uh, We've been looking at David. Uh, God calls him um, in in the New Testament a man after God's heart. And we're asking, why does he call him that? He doesn't call Abraham that. He doesn't say that about Moses or Joshua or Peter, James and John. But he does say it about David. Yet we've looked at David's life. And we see that uh, he moved to Gath very quickly when he was running from Saul. And, and Gath is, uh, is the Philistine territory where there are enemies all around him. That was a mistake. We see that he uh, got very angry with Nabal. His men guarded Nabal's flocks for months. And when it came time for Nabal to pay, he didn't. And so David said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill him and all his men. He was on his way to do it. But he got stopped by Abigail and said, that might not be wise. We see that David committed uh, adultery with Bathsheba. And then to cover it up, he killed Uriah, her husband. Even though Uriah was one of his best men in his army. uh, And then brought Bathsheba into the palace quickly so nobody would know that they had an affair. And then at the end of his life, he asked Joab to number the troops. Nothing wrong with taking a census, but this motivation was wrong. It was pride. Uh, In the past, he depended on God to give him victories, and everything was done by faith. But now he was more into counting numbers of soldiers and armaments. It had become a pride thing. So all these things David does, you say, well, that's not a person after God's own heart. So why is he called a person after God's own heart? Well, We've seen a number of things. I'll just kind of list them for you. One is we know he loved God. He just cared deeply for God. Uh, He had a tender heart. Uh, We've seen many times he focused on God. He didn't focus on Goliath, the enemy that he should have been scared of. He didn't focus on Saul, the enemy that could kill him at any moment. Instead, he focused on God. Uh, When he did sin, which was a number of times, he confessed quickly. And so we're kind of learning that a person after God's own heart isn't a person who's perfect, but a person who confesses their sins quickly and says, God, I'm sorry, get me back on the road to a person after your heart again. Uh, A couple weeks ago, Chris Quinn talked about that he was a worshiper. Uh, He took the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem and worshiped with a passion all the way there. And he wrote 75 psalms that we sing and we pray. And then last week, Micah talked about he was a person of prayer. Before he made decisions, he asked God and God answered his prayers. And so a person after God's own heart prays. Uh, now today, we learn that a person after God's own heart comes to God for wisdom. He, he's at blind intersections, David is, and we see each time before he goes, he inquires of God. And so if you want to be a person after God's own heart, you need to be a person who talks to God about what should I do in this decision. I uh, hope you enjoy this study. Oh, there are many verses in the journal about uh, blind intersections David faced. Look at those and see what he did, and you try to do the same. Have a great study.